assalamu alaikum class today we will study about the phylogenetic relationship of fishes as this is the start of our chapter so let we have discuss some evolutionary perspectives of fishes so that we can understand that how the fishes evolved and what were the reasons of evolution of fishes in the start of the lesson let me have discuss some evolutionary perspectives of fishes as fish is the aquatic life so the water is a medium uh, that support their life water is a buoyant medium that resist rapid fluctuation in temperature and covers over 70% of the earth's surface because life began in water and life tissues are made mostly of water it might seem that nowhere else would life be easier to sustain in this chapter we will study that how this is not entirely true actually you do not need to wear scuba gear to appreciate that fishes are adopted to aquatic environment in a fashion that no other group of animals can surpass if you spend recreational hours with hook and line visit a marine theme park or simply glance into a pet store when walking through a shopping mall you can attest to the variety and beauty of fishes This variety is evidence of adaptive radiation that began more than 500 million years ago and shows no sign of ceasing. Fishes dominate many watery environments and are also the ancestors of all other members of the subphylum vertebrata. This beautiful picture is of a fish 500 million years of evolution have resulted in unsurpassed diversity in fishes the spines of this beautiful marine lionfish are extremely venomous now let me discuss the phylogenetic relationship of the fishes fishes are included along with the chordates covered in a group called craniata This name is the description of a skull that surrounds the brain, olfactory organs, eyes and inner ear. These animals are divided into two subphyla. The subphylum Hyperoteri and the subphylum Vertebrata. In the subphylum Hyperoteri the hag fishes are included while in the phylum vertebrata lampreys cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes included traditional taxonomic group have combined the hag fishes lampreys and an extinct assemblage called ostracoderms into a super class called agnatha these are based on the absence of jaws in the group now modern cladistic analysis has revealed however that the lampreys share more characteristic with cartilaginous and bony fishes than with the hag fishes the term agnatha no longer has taxonomic significance but it it is often used as a convenient non taxonomic reference to jawless fishes actually zoologists do not know what animals were the first craniates molecular evidence gathered by comparing gene similarities of cephalochordates and vertebrates suggest that the vertebrate line age may go back 
about 750 million years. This date has not been confirmed by fossil evidence. Recent cladistic analysis of vertebrate evolution indicates that a group of fishes called head fishes are the most primitive vertebrates known, making a connection between the, this lineage and the other vertebrates depends on the analysis of two key vertebrate characteristics, the brain and the bone. Chinese researchers have recently unearthed that the oldest alleged craniate fossils, a small, lancelet-shaped animal that has characteristics that suggest an active predatory lifestyle. A brain is present that would have perceived sensory information from the pair of eyes that are seen in fossils. Muscle blocks along the body wall suggest an active swimming existence. This evidence means that these 530 million years old animals located prey by sight and then pursued it through prehistoric seas. The origin of bone in craniates is equally intergoing. A group of ancient eel-like animals, the conodonts, are known from fossils that date back about 5-10 million years. They have been assigned to a variety of phyla, but recent evidence is bringing a growing number of zoologists to accept them as a full-fledged craniates. They have two large eyes and mouth filled by teeth like structure known as dentine. A component found in the craniate skeleton. This is a picture of a conodont reconstruction. A wealth of conodont fossils has been found that date to 5-10 million years ago. These animals have been assigned to a variety of phyla, but recent information has led many zoologists to accept them as some of the very early vertebrates. Their two large eyes, eel-like body, and tooth-like denticles suggest that they lived as predators in prehistoric seas. This table is the interpretation of the phylogeny of fishes the evolutionary relationship among fishes are unsettled. This cladogram shows a few selected ancestral and derived characters. Each lower taxon has numerous synmorphies that are not shown. Most zoologists consider the ostracoderm a paraphyletic group Paraphyletic means having multiple lineages. Their representation as a monophyletic group is an attempt to simplify this presentation. Daggers indicates groups whose members are extinct. For example, in the Agnathas, Various ostracoderm taxa are extinct and class Placodermy also extinct. These structures may represent the earliest occurrence of bone in vertebrates. Other hypotheses on the origin of bone suggest that it may have arisen as denticle in the skin similar to those of sharks.
in association with certain sensory receptors or as structures for minerals especially calcium phosphate storage regardless of its origin bone was well developed by 500 million years ago it was present in the bony armor of a group of fishes called ostracoderms Ostracoderms were relatively inactive filter feeders that lived on the bottom of prehistoric lakes and seas. As you can see in the previous slide, the picture of an ancestral fish having a armor head. They possessed neither jaws nor pair appendages. However, the evolution of fishes resulted in both jaws and pair appendages as well as many other structures. The result of this adaptive radiation are described in further lessons. Did ancestral fishes live in fresh water or in the sea? The answer to this question is not simple. The first vertebrates were probably marine because ancient stocks of other deuterostomes phyla were all marine. Vertebrates however adopted to fresh water very early and much of the evolution of fishes occurred there. Apparently Early vertebrate evolution involved the movement of fishes back and forth between marine and freshwater environments. The majority of the evolutionary history of some fishes took place in ancient seas and most of the evolutionary history of other occurred in freshwater. The importance of fresh water in the evolution of fishes is evidenced by the fact that over 41% of all fishes species are found in fresh water even though fresh water habitats represents only a small percentage 0.0093% by volume of the earth's water resources This was all about the phylogenetic relationship and evolutionary perspective of the fishes. Hope you understand the lesson. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you. These are the references which are used to make these slides.